Welcome back to Movies in Short. Today, we'll recap a 2022 action thriller movie called Memory. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens in Mexico. Alex Lewis drives into a hospital parking lot and places his car keys in the sun visor. As he goes for the entrance, a Porsche comes in and two men enter the hospital. One of the men, with a bouquet of flowers has arrived to visit his mother, who is more or less catatonic. Alex is in the room, putting away supplies. As the man asks to have the room, Alex wraps a steel garrote rope around the man's neck, violently cutting it as blood spurts out. The man's mother can only watch in horror as her son dies in front of her. Alex takes the garrote and places it inside a plastic bag. Going back to his car, Alex texts a coded message to his handlers, telling them that contract has been fulfilled. Alex then dismantles the phone completely, putting it in the bag with the garrote. He reaches up to the visor to get his key only to not find it there. A confused, concerned look crosses his face. He pats his pockets only to find the key in one of the pockets of his scrubs, Alex says in nearly a whisper. He knows why that happened, and it is not good, in El Paso, Texas. Vincent Sarah is in a man's apartment while the man's daughter, Beatriz, draws. Vincent hands the man some money. Go talk to her, Beatriz's father says. She's very sweet, you'll see. Her father tells her to be nice to Vincent. This is when we realize the horrifying truth, the man is prostituting his own daughter. Vincent tries to ask her about her drawings, but she is distant, thinking Vincent is just like the rest. Vincent, nervous, keeps trying to ask her more questions, trying to avoid any sexual activity. Beatriz becomes more suspicious and realizes he is wearing a wire. She calls out to her father. Vincent is an undercover FBI agent and his cover has just been blown. As his team, including Linda Amistad and Hugo Marquez break the door down, the man puts a gun to Beatriz's head. Vincent tries to defuse the situation, but the thug says he won't go back and is willing to kill his own child. Beatriz bites her father, giving Vincent the opportunity to disarm him. However, they fall through the second floor's window, and Beatriz's father is killed in the process, leaving Beatriz angry and traumatized. As Vincent is being checked over by EMS, his boss, Gerald Nussbaum arrives and chews out Vincent. As Beatriz's father was a key component of a months-long trafficking case, him being dead now basically brings everything to a screeching halt. Beatriz is led away by authorities, giving Vincent a withering glare. Back in Mexico City, Alex meets with his middleman Mauricio, who gives him the information for his next assignment in El Paso. Knowing he is sick with a memory loss, but not wanting to let his bosses know, as a weakness like that could be a death sentence for him, Alex tries to make his intentions clear that he wants to retire. Mauricio tells him that the bosses will not accept something like that. Alex notes the amount of money is too much but Mauricio says the job is for two kills. Mauricio mentions that Alex has a brother that lives in El Paso, which Alex takes as a threat into being spied on. Mauricio says information is power, and to put the idea of quitting out of his mind. Men like us, don't retire. Alex drives to El Paso and checks in a hotel. He then checks his arm where he's written key details, such as his fake name, hotel, and other important information. It is clear that his memory is failing him, and he has resorted to shorthand to make sure he remembers what he has to do. Alex goes down to the bar. There, a beautiful woman named Maya, briefly flirts with him. A man, William Borden, gives him a briefcase, which he quickly inspects. Borden demands a quick timetable for the two hits, but Alex defers, saying the less the man knows the better. Alex goes back to his room and looks at the intelligence gathered for his first target, Ellis Van Camp. In a case, he pulls out and assembles a silenced pistol with laser sight, checking its accuracy. Vincent goes to a detention center to talk to Beatrice who is still angry with him over the death of her father. Vincent tells her that he is going to get her a special visa to come to the United States. He hopes she will testify against the men, but the choice is ultimately up to her. He gives her a sketchbook and tells her she deserves better than this. Ellis is working in his office when his wife comes in and assumes she will be going to the party alone. A few minutes later, the doorbell rings, and Alex bursts through, holding a gun to Ellis' head. Ellis leads him to a safe which he opens, just as his daughter calls out saying she is going to a party. Alex puts the man in a choke hold to keep him silent and breaks his neck. He grabs the flash drives and leaves. Borden gets the same cryptic text message from Alex that the first assassination is complete. Alex goes to meet his brother, who is suffering with Alzheimer's. Alex tries to make small talk about the past and sports, but he realizes his brother cannot comprehend what he is saying. Alex takes a cold look at his future, his mind already fading. He will join his brother in time in the same fate. Alex embraces his brother and leaves. At the Child Exploitation Task Force building, Nussbaum arrives to tell Vincent and his team that the task force is being dissolved, and that Hugo, 
a loaned agent from Mexico, is going home. Vincent protests this, saying that have a witness in Beatriz but his boss is not buying it. Nussbaum is firm though and tells Vincent if he wants to help Beatriz and get her visa approved, he will drop his objections and focus on the Van Camp murder. Vincent, wanting what is best for the girl ultimately relents and agrees. Alex follows Vincent as he drives Beatriz to her group home. We see that she is his next target, but the pictures are not that good. Vincent settles Beatriz and says goodbye, saying he will do his best to keep tabs on her. Beatriz gives him the picture she had drawn earlier and tells him to keep it. That night, Alex breaks into the group home and finds Beatriz's room. He sees her drawings as she wakes up and he realizes the truth, she is a child. Beatriz is scared, promising she won't say anything, and begs for her life. Alex is horrified, and quickly leaves. Alex contacts Borden to meet him at an isolated truck stop. Alex attacks him in the restroom for giving him a child as the target, and tells Borden he won't do it. Borden says Alex is a professional and will do the job, or they will tell his bosses in Mexico. I f***ing won't do it, are you deaf? Alex tells Borden that if the contract for Beatriz isn't called off, not only will he keep the flash drives, but Borden will answer to him. At a high-rise building, businesswoman and philanthropist Ivana Seelman gets out of her car and enters her office just as Borden calls her, and tells her that Alex knows about him, the flash drives, and Beatriz. He tells her that Alex wants Beatrice spared and he'll turn over the drives. Devana says she will handle it and warns Borden to never contact her again at her work. At the hotel bar, Alex is having a drink when he sees Maya being accosted by a drunk attempting to procure her services as an escort. Alex slams the man's head into the bar, and tells him to leave. Charmed, Maya has a drink with him. Meanwhile, Linda and Hugo have a drink at the bar. Hugo is angry that the superiors are giving up the case. Linda says they should take comfort in that Beatriz is safe. Noticing his necklace with six charms of St. Inez, Linda wants to know the story. Hugo tells her that a 13-year-old girl was kidnapped and murdered. Her family posted flyers everywhere. Hugo notes that everyone knew that military officer committed the murder. Hugo spent months building a quiet case, only for it to be turned over to the military, who buried it. In response to Hugo's attempt to get justice for the dead girl, the girl's mother, aunt, and three sisters were murdered and their bodies were hung outside Hugo's office as a means to taunt him. He tells Linda that she should learn the prayer of Saint Inez. Later that night, Alex is in bed with Maya when he suddenly begins convulsing and falls to the floor. Maya wakes up and comforts him, thinking he just had a bad dream. Alex knows better. He's getting worse. The next morning, Vincent drives up to the group home, which is now a crime scene as he finds out someone has murdered Beatrice. Meanwhile, Alex and Maya are getting dressed when he sees the news of Beatrice's murder. For a moment, Alex is not sure that he didn't do it himself and gets Maya to confirm he was with her all night. He then tells her he is leaving and to stay away from the hotel. Alex goes to his car, only to find a bomb underneath. Suddenly he is under fire. Mauricio has come to kill him. As Alex takes cover, Maya arrives, saying he forgot his pills. As he tries to push her to safety, Mauricio shoots and kills her, which enrages Alex who now goes in pursuit after Mauricio. Alex gets the drop on him, breaking his hand and knocking him out cold. Alex places Maya's body in the trunk of his car. Mauricio asks when he went soft, and that their bosses will kill him for this. Happy retirement, Maury. Alex says mockingly, walking away and triggering the car bomb. Devana meets with her doctor, Myers, who she pays top dollar to keep her in her youthful prime. Borden is working out at a gym when a car pulls up. A figure walks up to his window in the rain, and pulls out a gun. It's Alex, keeping his promise of retribution. Alex takes up residence in the basement of the abandoned bakery. In the basement, he checks the flash drives on a laptop. The first is a conversation between Ellis Van Camp and Devana. Ellis was threatening Devana with what he knew, with Devana discreetly threatening him back. On the second flash drive he finds pictures of Devana with her son Randy. He also finds pictures and video of Randy's sexual encounter with Beatrice. Realizing why he was really contracted for the job, Alex shuts the laptop in abhorrent disgust. The next morning, Randy barges into his mom's office. He knows about Borden's murder and knows he will be next for what he has done. Devana says that he needs to leave El Paso immediately. She says she will clean up the mess with Alex, and then hire the best lawyers to make his crimes go away. However, Randy needs to get help for his sexual urges. Back at the office, Vincent learns one set of .32 rounds killed Beatriz and Maya, while another set killed Borden which means they have two shooters. Vincent gets a call. It's Alex. He tells Vincent that powerful men had part in hurting Beatrice. Alex knows he is a bad man, but those responsible have to pay for what they did. If I can't finish this, you have to. As Linda traces the call, Vincent realizes Alex is outside on a park bench. 
He rushes outside but is too late. Alex is gone. Hugo goes to see William Borden's wife, who had previously noted a connection with the Van Camp family. She tries to seduce him but Hugo wants information. When pressed, she mentions Borden was talking on the phone about a man from Mexico with Devana Seelman. Hugo relays the new information to the team. Linda notes they are going after one of the wealthiest real estate developers in the nation. Linda searches Borden's name. While he wasn't a lawyer for Devana, he was a lawyer for her son Randy. Randy it turns out owned the detention center that Beatrice stayed in and Van Camp helped build it. Vincent surmises that Alex is going to kill Randy Seelman next. That night, on a private yacht, Randy parties. Linda, Hugo and Vincent are there to try and prevent his murder. Randy goes downstairs and coerces a waitress to go with him to his room. Vincent gets out of his car and finds the broken remnants of a pill bottle. He realizes that Alex is already on the boat and runs on board to search it. Randy tells the waitress to take her clothes off, more or less forcing her to have sex with him. When she goes to the bathroom, Alex grabs her mouth to silence her. He tells her to lock the door the second he leaves. She nods in agreement. Randy is waiting for her on the bed when Alex comes in, grabs a pillow and then fires twice. After finding the body, Vincent goes back out on deck, and sees Alex off the boat. He gives chase, and hears a car alarm. It is a trap however, and Alex gets the drop on him. Alex tells Vincent that he has done crazy things, but you don't hurt children, ever. Alex tells him he is running out of time. Vincent says he knows Alex isn't well. We all have to die, Vincent. What's important is what you do before you go. As Alex tries to get into his car, Hugo arrives and points his gun, but Vincent manages to convince him to lower it. Alex drives off, only for Hugo to shoot at his car. He escapes but is wounded. When he arrives back to town, he steals a jeep and drives off. He passes out in the car, only for a motorcycle cop to knock on his window. Alex starts mumbling before the cop sees the gun and draws his. Alex's reflexes kick in and he accidentally shoots the cop dead. He goes back to the bakery where he cleans his wound and cauterizes it with liquor and fire. The next morning, Linda and Vincent hear about the death of the cop, surmising Alex got spooked. Vincent says they need to find him before El Paso PD does as they will more or less kill him on sight. Linda says she has learned more about Alex. As it turns out he is an El Paso resident, him and his brother. His father was physically and sexually abusive, but no charges ever stuck, which explains why Alex does not and will not harm children. Alex and his father supposedly died in a bakery fire, in truth, Alex killed his dad and faked his death. Vincent and his team go to check the bakery to find they had just missed Alex. Detective Mora is at Sealman's building protecting her with numerous officers. Suddenly, a couple of police vehicles have their alarms triggered. Which creates enough distraction for Alex to slip in. Holding an officer hostage, he gets him into an elevator to the floor Devana is on. After a brief standoff, Alex exchanges fire with the officers, incapacitating them by shooting their body armor. He runs up to the roof and the officers follow but it is just a trick, as Alex gets on a window cleaner and shoots through a glass window to where Mora and Devana are. He knocks Mora out with a rifle before dropping it for his pistol, confronting Devana. You killed my son. Yes. And I know what you've done. Alex grabs her and pulls the trigger but nothing happens. He tries several times, but nothing happens. Detective Mora wakes up and knocks Alex out. Back at the bakery, Linda finds something on the ground, the firing pin for Alex's pistol. He had forgotten about it. Mora proceeds to beat Alex for the death of the officer Alex accidentally killed. Alex says he will only speak to Vincent, but Mora will not budge. Back at the office, Vincent is told by Linda they got a package from the bakery address. It is one of the flash drives that have the videos of Randy's sexual assault on Beatrice. He shows this to Nussbaum who is incredulous. Vincent is able to convince his boss to transfer Alex in FBI custody. Alex is transferred to the hospital and Vincent sees his injuries. He calls out Detective Mora for beating him up and implies he is being paid off by Devana. Vincent, Linda and Hugo go to see Alex and give him his pills, though he notes they will not do him good much longer. Alex says he wants Devana to pay but they note she isn't tied to any of it. Alex disagrees, he knows she hired him to kill Ellis Van Camp and Beatrice. While he killed Ellis, he wouldn't kill a child. Devana is met by her doctor. She wants revenge and gives him a vial of drugs that will kill Alex. She wants him to poison him for $10 million. Dr. Myers box, citing his Hippocratic oath to do no harm. Undeterred, Devana tries another tactic, blackmail. As it turns out, Dr. Myers also had sex with underage girls that her son procured. If he won't help her, she'll expose him. She notes that Randy was weak, but he was my son. You are not. Alex gives a written statement, 
but Vincent says given his profession as a killer and his lack of time left to live, about three to six months at most, his statement alone will not do much in court against Ivana. Alex says he wants justice. You really expect we're going to find justice? I expect you to try. Alex says he has more evidence, a phone call that Devana made to Van Camp. However, he cannot remember where he hid it. Vincent and Nussbaum meet with his superior, Andy Villalobos, with the first flash drive. Villalobos tells them that he is glad Randy Seelman is dead. Vincent tells him Devana was covering for her son for his crimes and hired Alex to kill Beatrice. Villalobos says they cannot go on the word of a contract killer who is dying of Alzheimer's. Vincent says there is a recording of Devana threatening Van Camp. They just have to find it. Vincent once again goes to Alex, saying they need the recording or Devana will walk. Alex still cannot remember. That night, Dr. Meyer sneaks into the hospital to kill Alex. However, Alex notices he doesn't use an alcohol swab and attacks him. El Paso SWAT is called into the hostage situation. Vincent and the team arrive, learning that Alex will only talk to him. Alex comes out with a sheet over his head with Dr. Myers. A sniper shoots who he thinks is Alex but kills Dr. Myers instead, Alex had made him switch clothes. Jumping into an SUV that Vincent was driving, he quickly interrogates him. Alex realizes that Devana sent the doctor to kill him and she might kill Vincent to bury the whole case. Vincent agrees that might happen. Alex begins to stumble, misspelling Barry as B-E-R-Y. Alex says Vincent once said that justice wasn't guaranteed, which Vincent agrees he said that. Resignation crosses Alex's face. We owe it to that child, Vincent. Alex drops his gun and steps outside of the SUV as the SWAT team gun him down. Vincent and Linda pack up the office, defeated. However, Vincent sees a picture of the bakery, which only has four letters left, V-E-R-Y. Vincent realizes he remembered. Vincent and Linda go to the bakery and find the flash drive. Vincent plays it for Nussbaum and Villalobos. However, Villalobos says it is not enough, it is circumstantial at best. In addition, since Alex is now dead, they now have even less to go on. Most cynically, Villalobos notes even if Devana Seelman gave Alex a gun, money, and a person to kill, she would still get away with it. Vincent loses his cool at this point, completely enraged that the institutions that are supposed to help the powerless bow down to money and power. Vincent ultimately calls his bosses cowards. For his outburst, Vincent is suspended and told to take a long leave of absence. That night, Linda comes to Vincent's apartment and tells him they are going out drinking to celebrate his suspension. They arrive at the bar. Around the same time, Devana Seelman is at her mansion drinking a glass of wine when suddenly, a man comes up behind her and violently slashes her throat, killing her. Back at the bar, Vincent tells Linda he has had enough to drink. Linda reaches for her wallet but claims she forgot about it. Vincent grabs his credit card and gives it to the bartender. As he waits for the check, he sees the news report about the death of Devana Seelman at her home. Linda starts saying the prayer of St. Inez in Spanish while Vincent looks at her in shock. Did you just give me an alibi? Amen. In the desert, a man burns his clothes and throws his knife in the water. He takes off his mask and it's revealed it's Hugo. Not willing to let another injustice happen, he conspired with Linda to give Vincent an alibi while he finished the job Alex started. As no longer part of the task force, he is above suspicion. Hugo drives off back to Mexico as the movie draws to a close. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon.